Um, thanks to all my congressional partners who are, are joining here this evening, because right now, the fate of climate action is in our hands. And I cannot overstate this enough. This is the moment to pass the most consequential climate and economic legislation in generations. The two pieces of legislation, the bipartisan infrastructure bill and the budget reconciliation package would make historic investments in our country's physical and human infrastructure. They are Joe Biden's Build Back Better agenda. And we cannot build back better unless we build back greener. Our workers and families need both of these bills to pass together. That is the deal. And that is the best deal for our country. Uh, and that's why we're so proud of Pramila and all of the progressive Democrats in the House for holding the line, uh, because there's been a lot of talk recently about what progressive lawmakers need to be willing to cut, what we have to be willing to negotiate on. Well, we cannot negotiate with deadly wildfires. They don't negotiate. We cannot negotiate with massive hurricanes. They don't negotiate. We cannot negotiate with floodwaters, sea level rise, droughts, temperature rise, and we cannot negotiate how much these climate fuel disasters are costing us. Tens of billions in the past few years alone. Let's just look at the disaster that we had just in the last month. It's billions of dollars. And to those who say climate action is too expensive, look around. As climate inaction uh, is costing us billions, billionaires in our country have grown their wealth by one point eight trillion dollars over the cost of this pandemic. And that is enough to pay for half of the entire three point five trillion dollar package, just the wealth that has gone to billionaires in our country. And as billionaires complain about entitlement societies, they meanwhile have become 62 percent richer during this pandemic. If we're going to talk about entitlements, let's talk about the real entitlements in our economy, in our tax code. The real entitlements are the tens of billions of dollars in tax breaks that the oil companies, the gas companies, the coal companies receive every single year, even as they earn the greatest profits in the history of the world. The real entitlements are the corporate tax loopholes and the offshore tax breaks that shield companies from paying their fair share for participating in the American economy. The real entitlements are the special tax breaks that Wall Street executives receive that allow them to pay lower tax rates than most middle class workers. So as we move forward with these negotiations on our spending, we need to remember what the real entitlements are in this country. It's time for us to stop talking about what is politically feasible and start talking about what is scientifically necessary. We cannot compromise on science. Policies will either take steps to save the planet or they will not. And we should not compromise on the millions of good paying union jobs in solar and wind and electric vehicles once we pass the budget reconciliation package, including the tens of thousands of jobs in the Civilian Climate Corps, jobs and investments that will be in the whole field of environmental justice, long overlooked, making sure that vulnerable communities that are born the worst burdens of our addiction to fossil fuels. That must be corrected. That has to be in this bill. Emissions reductions, jobs and justice, those are the non-negotiables. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and I introduced the Green New Deal just two and a half years ago, and it's created a movement across this country. Deb Harlan and I, just two years ago this week, we introduced the Thrive Act to create an even broader frame for how to look at these issues. So we've come a long way and we've got to finish it off in this debate. When Congress was debating infrastructure earlier this year, I said no climate, no deal. 
The budget reconciliation package is the climate part of that deal. We need to pass both bills together, finally take steps towards addressing the most important issue facing our world, the climate crisis. It is the economic, environmental, national security, and moral issue of our time. And we can do it by making the ultra wealthy, the big corporations and the polluting fossil fuel industry pay for it. So I'm very grateful that the House progressives are continuing uh, to uphold uh, their end. I know that uh, Jimmy Gomez and Barbara Lee and my great partner from Massachusetts, Ayanna Presley, uh, are on tonight. Uh, and Bernie, you've already heard from him. So you know that we've got a, a battle on and we're in this fight.